Hey everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra today again with Matt Hot, the high apostle of the gauge. And we are gonna do some ballistics gel testing today, just like we did pattern testing with various loads. We're gonna do those exact same loads with some gel testing. Today's video is made possible thanks to the generous sponsorship of companies like LuckyGunner.com. Please head to LuckyGunner.com and thank them for being a sponsor of Active Self Protection. Again, if you haven't watched my video on ballistics gel and what it's good for and why we use it, go watch that video first. Link is in the description. We have four loads here. Number four buck, number double zero, this is Federal Flight Control, eight pellet double odd zero. This is cheapy S, uh, cellular and below, nine pellet, old school stuff, 15 pellet, uh, Remington Magnum Express double odd buck. So we have four different loads here. We're gonna shoot them into the gel. I have five gel blocks here today, so I don't know if we're gonna get a whole lot more done than that, but when we get those, we'll have some comparisons to make. Gonna let Matt shoot them up. Number four. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Off into the dirt. Oh, we knew that was gonna happen. Plonk. Yeah, look at that. I think they all yeah. stayed in it. I think they all stayed in the first block. I don't see any penetration all the way through. <laughs> yeah, well, hey. Well, shoot. Okay. So second block is clear. Got the, yeah, the wads in there, I think. So let's see. Well, minus all the nastiness in the dirt. Sorry guys, it is what it is, right? Uh, what we have here is we have, uh, we have pellets as little as seven inches of penetration. To get to 12, we really want at least 12. I mean, 12 is where our minimum is. And I would say we've got one, two, three, four, four pellets that made it that far. So out of all of these, the problem, of course, is that we had under penetration on a lot of these. Now, would that make it completely unacceptable? No, nah, I mean, it might work okay if I got a frontal shot, not, you know, light clothing, those kinds of things. But imagine if I took a big guy like this and I had to shoot him through this side here because he's threatening my children in their doorway. And it has to go through, you know, all of that space to get to a vital organ like the heart. I don't like that kind of penetration. So let's shoot some others. And I might add, if this is the penetration we're getting at essentially point blank distance, that's only going to drop off as it goes. Yeah, it really is. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty underwhelmed by that. All right, let's get our dirt color ballistics gel. This just in, uh, shotguns make things move. <laughs> There's a whole lot of thump in here, a whole lot of momentum. All right, this is a reduced recoil eight pellet flight control. Keep wanting to run the pump forward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, eyes and ears, eyes and ears, good to go. We had at least something exit. So let's see what we can see here. I can't see anything from this. There's side. the wad. And then the pellets are over here. You can see. Oh, you can see the copper ones. Yeah, exactly. I can only see two. It looks like they all kind of moved out that way. Yeah, they may have popped out. Let me look from the top. Yeah, they may have, they may have split out the side. I don't know. So there's the wad. You can see the wad here. Shoot, the wad penetrated like about six inches or so. Yeah, the, the flight control wad's significantly more substantial than regular shotgun wads. And at close ranges, yeah, I'd, I'd be a little leery of, of where the wad hits. Because it's going to go in. It's going to go in a bit. I mean, as you can see. So let's see what we had here. We had somewhere in the neighborhood, the ones that we can kind of get here, about, about 21 inches of penetration there. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, you got more mass than the number four pellets. Two, you got a harder lead alloy than the number four pellets. Yeah. And you've got copper plating. All that is done intentionally to keep the pellets from deforming as they go down the barrel. The pellets are tougher. That lack of deformation is what gets you those tight patterns. Hmm. That also manifests an increased penetration. It's gonna be interesting. Let's see the other ones. Cellar room below, nine pellet buck. Nine pellet double up. So same thing, we got zero in the first block. Second block. That's kind of fun. That's like dirt coming out the back or something. No, that's the horsehair wad. Oh, that's that nasty horsehair wad. That's yeah. hilarious. So I captured, let's see, I see uh, there's one right here. There's two. So I got actually two sticking out the bottom. 
Um, one looks like it went through that. Yeah, one, one looks like it went in a box. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got about that same level of penetration, about 21 inches with the nine pellet. But you can see we got, you know, a little bit more spread out of that one. That's an interesting result. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know the funny part, Matt? What I think we ought to do is flip this block around, flip this block around, and shoot the last one out of that because it doesn't seem like they're staying in that first block. Okay. Remington 3-inch Magnum, 15 pellet double out buck. 3-inch Mangalums. America. You know, it's interesting to me on this one, Matt, the thing that I noticed is the wad, it comes out of the wad so much earlier on mm -hmm. that Remington. So the wad didn't penetrate at all. Yeah, it's already out of the wad. Come here and look at this, John. You can see, see all this stuff here? This is what's called Grex. That's the, this is like this little plasticky stuff that comes, uh, that, that uh, cushions the pellets. And, and it's already out of the wad when it gets there. Yeah, look at, look at this, look at the spread here. Yeah, it's already leaving. And it went all the way through. And I've got one, two, well, let's see if I can count them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pellets still in, 10 with 11 at the bottom here. Probably lost some out the sides. Yeah, we probably lost some of those out the sides as well. A fairly similar penetration. We're talking about 21 inches or so yep. of penetration, which again would probably in cal calibrated gel, especially if we had a heavy clothing test or something like that, be right in that, that 18 inch range, which is what we want. Um, an interesting thing here that you'll notice is, is if you come here and see, see, see what the, oh dang it, I'll show you with this other one. And see how it got flat? is that's what happens when these guys get pushed down the barrel. These non-plated rounds, these non-plated BBs, they get flattened. And so they, got, they get sent out the barrel more like a disc than they do a ball. Yeah. And that's why they tend to open up more. So that's an interesting finding. Yeah, and you'll notice, despite all the, the Sturm und Drang, the, the power, the recoil, the noise, the weight, it didn't really do anything different than the regular nine pellet double lot, And it didn't do as well as the flight control. So, I mean, you go 15 pellet, three inch, magnum, all of that, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, at the end of things, I don't think, it didn't penetrate anymore. No. It didn't do me any better. And so that's why I avoid those big old three inch magnums for home, for, you know, home defense and, and personal protection. Yeah, there, there's no, there's no real upside to them in my opinion. Um, and they come with considerable downsides in terms of recoil and capacity and, and you know, expenses. They're hard to find compared to, compared to regular buckshot, so. I don't see any use for them. Well, I think at the end of the day, I, I kind of like, um, you know, I generally load that eight pellet flight control, double op buck. Oh yeah. Um, you know, though, I think I'd like to see us take one more shot and see if we get that same thing where, where see if we can kind of capture all eight pellets and see what happens. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. One more eight pellet flight control, double op buck. Man, just the report on that is so much noticeably less. Mm hmm Oh, look at that. Yeah. Two, Same two, thing. Two, 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 one there, one there, one there. So I think we got the same thing. It ends up coming out of the barrel there. Uh, we got, we, we captured three of them. Now there's the interesting bit too. So, so come in and look at this. As you can see, that's a copper plated BB and so it didn't deform. And it's one of the reasons that the flight control stays in a column so well is because they don't deform. And so they're, they're running down field more like a baseball than a disc. So that's only four of the eight pellets that we captured though. Where the hell did the other ones go? I will wager that they flew off the side somewhere. Somewhere, must've flown out the side. Huh. You know, pop, it, pop a box open underneath it, see if there's any in there. Well, there's a, looks like an exit right there. Oh, definitely a pellet there on top. An exit and then an in it went out there and in there so I bet you there's a pull that out I bet you there's a there's a pellet in there come here you oh, oh there it goes <laughs> yeah John check this out there's one here yeah and there was another one loose in the box okay okay so that's what we're seeing here is that it's kind of spreading a little bit, but once it gets inside the gel, which I'm totally cool with because once it gets inside the, the people-y parts, I'm cool with it going like this. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's great. 